Hello and welcome to this week's poetry analysis on Beowulf. In the Viking society, word fame was the greatest of all treasures. Everyone, whether man, woman, or child, sought after a renown that would last them long after they were dead. Now they achieved this by going on their annual summer raids. So taking all of this into consideration, and knowing that Beowulf was written in a time of the Christianization of Scandinavia, we have to take a deeper look into what Beowulf's actual motives were for his journey to Denmark. Now we know from the history given to us in the book, there was a wear guild, or a man price, a blood price, whatever you want to describe it as, that needed to be paid between the Geats in Sweden and the Danes in Denmark. Now surely this was part of Beowulf's plan in going to Denmark. But who's to say that he didn't have ulterior motives? Now we know that the beast Grendel was plaguing the Danish countryside. So if Beowulf were to slay him, he would become the most famous of all men to have ever lived. So, was his pagan desire for fame and glory greater than his Christian desire to do good for his neighbors? Let's see. So throughout the poem, Beowulf is seen accrediting his feats and his accomplishments to God, trying to project his glory from his own deeds onto that of the Christian deity. However, this action is very inconsistent with Beowulf's motives, his actions throughout the rest of the poem, and the culture as a whole in this time period. Now an example of this is when Beowulf is seen coming into Era in Denmark for the first time. He walks into the hall and he's proclaiming his glory to everyone there. He's telling of the swimming race with Brekka. He's telling of how he had slayed sea monsters. And when challenged by Unferth, he quickly combats his statements and begins to proclaim why he is the greatest man who's ever lived. Because his boastful attitude was such a vital part of the Viking society, it wasn't looked down upon for Beowulf to come and to be proclaiming his own glory to everyone around him. So taking all of this into consideration, we have to ask ourselves, was Beowulf's motive for going to Denmark in the first place for his own glory and to gain word fame amongst all the people, or was it really because he felt a calling from God to do good for those around him? I think we can safely say that because of his pagan influence, because of the culture around him, Beowulf's main motives were to gain fame for himself. So the next topic at hand, why did the Danish people revert back to their pagan ways instead of asking God for help with Grendel? In the beginning of the poem, the Scot tells the readers or the listeners that the people of Denmark have turned away from God in facing Grendel. Now, Grendel had been plaguing Erot for some 12 years at this point. Now, because the people didn't see any signs of change after they had been praying to the Christian God, they decided that they would turn away from him and go back to their pagan gods, Odin, Thor, Frey, all the ones that you've heard about in history or in pop culture. Because this pagan culture had been such a vital part of everyone's life within this society for thousands and thousands of years, it was very, very easy for the people to revert back to these old ways. Now within the poem itself, you can definitely tell that the Scop, the one who is giving this story out, is looking down upon the Danes with shame for them having gone back to their pagan ways. He even went on to say that it was their heathenish hope and that they remembered hell in their hearts. This is some pretty strong language and it paints a very clear picture of what the Christians at this time thought of pagans. Now a very plausible explanation for why the people of this time did this, everything within paganism as a whole, whether it's in Scandinavia or any part of the world, it's very much based upon sight your ability to see the world around you and to see nature for what it is. Now the people having done this would see something in nature and assign a god to it. Because of this pattern and because they made idols for themselves, it was much easier for these people to place their faith and their hope into tangible things. The idols made of either stone or of wood, things that look like this. These all emphasized the society's reliance on being able to see and to touch and to hold whatever it is that they're placing their faith in. Now contrast this with the Hebrew society, and everything is based a whole lot more on the ability to hear, to listen to God, the Judeo-Christian God, and to be able to respond to what it is that he is telling the people to do. So in summation, when we look at the reasons why the people were so easily swayed back to their pagan ways, you have to take into consideration 
the society as a whole, the influence that paganism had had over them for thousands of years prior to their Christianization, and also to their reliance on seeing and holding things that they could place their hope in. I have three review questions for you all. Number one, what was Beowulf's prime motivation for sailing to Denmark? Number two, why did the people of Denmark turn back to their pagan gods rather than continuing to pray to the Christian god? And number three, name three of the Norse gods that were mentioned in this video. Throughout the epic that we have previously discussed, one can see how paganism plays a bigger role in their culture. The characters do believe in the God, however, it seems as if more idols play a bigger role than God. For instance, when Beowulf arrives in Era, Hrothgar wants to greet him with treasures and gifts as a reward for him coming to them. This shows the status of, of the treasures and how they play a bigger role in their society. Furthermore, as Beowulf is dying, he asks Hrothgar to bring him his treasure. By asking for his treasure, it symbolizes the pagan mindset. The love of treasure in the pagan society was not considered a sin. However, as Christians, we believe that the, uh, that the love of money is the root to all evil. In addition to the treasures, the glory is not really given to God. What I mean by this is, the characters will often say something like, let God be thanked. However, the glory is really given to the person who earned it, such as Beowulf when he defeated Grendel. After Beowulf defeats Grendel, Hrothgar tells him, and take whatever you want from whatever I may own, which not only symbolizes Hrothgar's gratitude, but also how he somewhat puts Beowulf above God. In a sense, he praises Beowulf rather than God for the defeat of Grendel. He further goes to say, glory is now yours forever and ever. Your courage has earned it and your strength, placing the glory on Beowulf instead of God, even though he does say, may God be as good to you forever as you have been here. This implies that God is not really a part of their culture, he is more of just like a figure. So here's some review questions. How was paganism showed in the epic through treasures? How was God just a figure? How does paganism line up with Christianity? So now we have seen that Christianity has played a huge part in Beowulf's culture. So can we label Beowulf as a good Christian? In order for us to do that, we need to define what a good Christian is in our context. Biblically, as shown in Colossians 1, 9 through 10, a good Christian is someone who walks in a manner worthy of the Lord, bearing fruit in everything that he does, and constantly increasing in knowledge of him. So taking this definition, it's really hard for us to classify anyone as a good Christian. Beowulf and many of the characters in the poem have very good Christian qualities. However, there are many very ungodly and pagan qualities that many of these characters have. These can be in how they live and how they act and how they respond to certain situations. For example, Beowulf on his deathbed requests to see the treasure that he has gotten from the dragon. To the everlasting Lord of all, to the King of glory, I give thanks that I behold this treasure here in front of me, that I have been allowed to leave my people so well endowed on the day I die. Beowulf mixes Christianity and his love of wealth very much in this quote. He contradicts himself, you know, a little bit too much for it to be swayed one side or the other. Him saying this shows a very materialistic point of view and is extremely pagan in itself. Contrasting this action though, Beowulf is constantly praising God for uh, when he defeated Grendel's mother. You could say that Beowulf knows what the right thing to do is, but when he is surrounded by others, he wants to gloat and build himself up so that others see how great he really is. We see this when the battle between Beowulf and Brekka took place. And I was conserving my strength for the final stretch when this storm blew up. And with it came sea monsters. After Breck actually beat him, um, he was uh, constantly telling everyone, oh, I killed nine sea monsters in this fight, and making it seem like it wasn't really uh, that big of a deal, uh, but making people think, oh, wow, he really is that great. But now, let's take into account Wiglaf. As a whole, Wiglaf is a selfless, sacrificing soldier that kills the dragon when Beowulf could not. Based off of all we know about Wiglaf, we could label him basically as a good guy, but I don't know if we could label him as a good Christian. Now, was the glory of Beowulf's achievements really given to God? 
As we talked about earlier, Beowulf credits all of his success in defeating Grendel's mother to God. Is that really real though? Did he really mean that? So let's dive into that a little bit. Beowulf is by himself with the dead Grendel's mother laying next to him. Um, and he doesn't have anyone to gloat around. He's in this really empty hallway and under the water. When he's by himself, he is constantly praising God and giving him glory for his amazing achievement. So maybe that really showed his true self and how he gave glory to God. The monster wrenched and wrestled with him, but Beowulf was mindful of his mighty strength. The wondrous gifts of God showered on him. He relied for help on the Lord of all, on his care and favor. So he overcame the foe and brought down the helpers. There are also other hints of uh, Beowulf giving the glory to God throughout the poem, but it's not as evident as one of these. Beowulf is at a point in his life where he knows what he wants, but he doesn't want to sacrifice or give up his life as a very successful warrior and king. So now, I also have three questions to review of what we just talked about. Number one, what verse references did I use to describe what the, biblically a good Christian is? Number two, what other place in the poem did Beowulf give glory to God over his own? And number three, is Beowulf a good Christian and why do you think that? And that's all we have for you today. Thank you for tuning in to Poetry Analysis, and we will see you next time.